What's up everyone, it's your friendly neighborhood French Canadian and today I'll show you how to become a god of thunder. I must consult with the elder gods. So this is a faith and dexterity build where it will primarily be using incantations as well as a twin blade with a lightning ash of war. I based this on the character Raiden from Mortal Kombat. I know this freaking hat looks silly as hell, but it's the, literally the only one in the game that looks similar to his. I'll show you how to use this build in a fight, uh, then I'll go through all the items you will need, the incantations, the weapons, the talismans, and then I'll show you how each of the individual uh, incantations we're going to use work, so you'll then have a better idea of how to use them. And seeing them in action always helps too, so. So as you'll see in the showcase, I make quick work of a Garonk, which is pretty ridiculous. I actually stance break him with only using uh, one of the lightning spells that we have. But I'll go over all the spells in detail a bit later in the video. So right now I just want to explain the way you want to use this build, whether against bosses or against regular enemies. So first you want to use the Dragon Bolt Blessing, because um, it will actually make hits bounce off of you. And the specifics of uh, this is that one-handed light attacks will bounce, one-handed non-charged strong attacks will also uh, bounce except whips and great or colossal weapons. And it lasts over a minute, so it's pretty freaking good in my opinion. Against bosses specifically, I would say use um, the Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike as well as the Lightning Spear if you're trying to do more ranged battle or if you're healing or if you're hiding from certain attacks, then uh, the Lightning Spear actually has a really, really good range. The rest of the spells are pretty much all AoEs and uh, specifically the Frozen Lightning Spear can proc Frostbite. But if you're not using other like Frost spells or Frost weapons, then you know, you can't really count on that for big damage. Our big damage again is the Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike. So it can be really good against bosses because it does do a lot of damage, but it costs also a lot of FP and does less damage than the Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike. So the AoEs you really want to be using against regular mobs of enemies like the Glaive or Fortisac's uh, two Lightning Spears, which are actually really good to use now because unlike before, you won't get hit out of it even if you're still in that charging animation because a lot of these spells, your character will kind of like hover above the ground before striking it with lightning and before you would get hit out of it instantly and you would fall on the ground and then it would take forever for your character to get up kind of like when you get knocked off your horse right but now because of the buff you can actually take hits and continue the animation and actually go through with the uh, lightning strikes which is actually pretty good because most of these aoe lightning spells there is actually initial damage if you strike the enemy like point blank with the lightning and obviously there will also be damage from the lightning arcing forward because it is an AoE. But the initial hit of the lightning hitting the ground will actually do damage if you're right in the enemy's faces. So I think it's a really really solid build. I was actually really surprised at the amount of damage we can do with this. The damage in combination with using the Dragon Ball Blessing where like enemies will just bounce off uh, off of you when hitting you, it does really make you feel like you're playing a god of thunder. So I really hope you're going to enjoy this build. So I chose the twin blade for this because I looked at the halberds and I couldn't use the lightning slash ash of war like I wanted to. So I think a twin blade kind of works, you know, it looks more like a staff weapon, which is what Raiden would use in the games anyway. So I really think this is one of the better choices. And it's perfect because this is a dex and faith build and twin blade is really really great for a dex build. Special shout outs to Danny for dropping me this beautiful weapon because I'm an idiot and I sold it in the beginning of this character's playthrough. So please say a big thank you to Danny in the comments. Now you can find that this twin blade is super early game actually, you can get to it like right away. It's in the uh, dragon burnt runes. Now in the runes there's two places you can go down to, one will have a fake chest that will teleport you and one will have the real chest. So the real chest is like on this side right here, the fake one is on this side. So all you need to do is use this a Guild Lake South or any of the other side of Graces, make your way through the lake here, 
Uh, if you haven't fought the dragon yet, he'll come down, but you don't need to fight him to get this. And you go through the rooms, there will be a lot of enemies, a lot of dogs, a lot of these zombie dudes. So uh, be careful. So you can definitely like start this build early, but the only problem is a lot of the good lightning uh, dragon incantations or whatever, um, you can only get like mid to late game, so it's a bit boring in the uh, beginning stages, let's say. Now we'll need a seal to cast our dragon incantations, and we'll be using the gravel stone seal, because if you see in the passive effects, it boosts dragon cult incantations, which is exactly what we'll be using for this build. And if you look in the attribute scaling as well, you see that it scales S with faith. Now a few people have been commenting uh, from my top video, my tough Beifong build, that you can use two gravel stones in each hand and then it'll double the damage boost you can get. So you can also do that, you know, have two gravel stones and then your primary weapon as well. For the gravel stone seal, you'll have to kill a specific knight in the capital. Um, if you haven't unlocked the door yet, then you need to take the avenue balcony and I'll show you the easiest way to get there, but you can also get there without unlocking the door, so it's really up to you. Now once you jump down here, there will be a few enemies, but uh, there's only one here that you actually need to kill, the others won't attack you. So it's the knight down there you see with the spear and the shield. That's the guy you need to kill, uh, but be careful, there is an archer with a great bow uh, right there. So he'll spot you and he'll try to kill you, so try, try to like pull him either behind to the left there of the dragon, uh, behind the like leg or whatever. So he won't be able to shoot you, or you can fight him like behind here, but also be careful because there's some dogs, so there is that. He's pretty annoying to fight, but uh, bleed works wonders on these guys. Also, uh, there's the lever if you haven't unlocked the door. Now the build stats look like this for me at level 141. 40 vigor, 40 mind, 20 endurance, 40 dex, and 50 faith. The dex is really gonna be only for your weapon, and when you use the Ash of War, it actually imbues your weapon with lightning, which kills with dexterity. So it's really for your melee damage only, whereas faith is really for all the incantations. You could reduce your vigor if you wanted to put more points in endurance, but I didn't find myself like having issues with endurance during fights because you do so much damage that it's kind of easy to kill them pretty quickly, but if you plan on doing more melee fighting, then I would spend just more points in endurance, maybe remove some from mind or vigor. I think mind might be a bit too high, but I don't like having to drink that blue Gatorade like every two seconds in a fight, especially in a boss fight, so that's why I put so many points in mind. As I mentioned earlier, we'll be using the Lightning Slash Ash of War, it's super easy to find. Make your way to the Altus Plateau, and you can use the Outer Wall Side of Grace. Make your way here-ish, and um... It'll be a group, like a camp of enemies, right here. Kill them and the scarab will be there as well. So the scarab should be right here next to the fire pit. Once you have that, put it on your weapon. I'm using the lightning affinity, which of course will make our weapon do lightning damage with every strike, which again scales with dexterity, which is really good for this build. Now you're not going to be able to put like a buff on the weapon, like Vike's lightning bolt will not work, or the armament buff where you put lightning on your weapon will also not work. If you want to do that, I mean you can change the affinity, but the buff we'll be using does work with that because it does not buff the weapon, and I think it's better overall anyways. But if you do want to use the red lightning buff instead of the yellow lightning buff, then you can make your way to the mountaintops of the giants, to the Lord Contender's Evergel, and you can then fight Vike and you'll be able to get that incantation. I also have a video showing you the fight and exactly how to get there uh, if you're not sure, so you can look that up if you want. Let's go through the talismans for this build. So first the twin blade talisman, for obvious reasons. It enhances the final hit 
of chain attacks by 20%. So it does 20% more damage on enemies. To get this talisman, you need to come to the Weeping Peninsula at Castle Morn. So once you have the behind the castle side of grace, I think you can see it from here. Yeah, come down here, you see this tower uh, right where my hat is pointing, I guess. <laughs> There's a ladder there and climb up there and you'll be able to loot that talisman from the chest. Now, if you don't want to use a twin blade, a secondary option would be something like the turtle talisman, which I can't find right now, right there. The green turtle talisman, because if you keep your endurance pretty low, then this will help you if you do um, a lot of melee and up close fighting. Now, the second talisman we'll be using is the lightning scorpion charm. So it raises the damage you do with lightning attacks, but it also lowers your damage negation. You can find this charm in the Altus Plateau. You need to go to the Windham Catacombs and you'll need a stone sword to be able to unlock the area where it's at. It's pretty easy once you get to the catacomb, like you just follow the path it wants you to take and eventually you'll see the uh, fog wall, so it's really easy. But the way you get there is you want to take Urtree Grazing Hill Side of Grace and instead of going down here, as you see there's a path going up and you want to go up to the Windham Runes. Now once you're here, you want to go through the runes, now stick to the right, and then you'll see a door leading to the catacombs. Now to increase our damage further, we'll be using the Faithful's Canvas Talisman. You can also use the Phlox uh, Canvas Talisman, which does way more damage. And you can get it at the very end of Millicent's questline. Once you've helped her either defeat her sisters or you helped her sisters defeat her, then you have to go back to Gowry. Um, if you recall, he's in Caleb. There's a little shack right here, yeah, right here, go back to him and he'll give you that talisman. Now, if you want the one I'm using, you know, you're not at the Halig Tree area yet, then the one I'm using it can be found in the Celia Crystal Tunnel. It's pretty easy to find again as you make your way through it. Uh, once you get to a certain room, you'll see there's like stairs to the right and there will be two pests guarding a chest and the talisman will be in that chest. Lastly, we want the Shard of Alexander to increase the damage that, that the lightning slash will do to our enemies. And so the Shard of Alexander, you can either get this version at the very end of his quest in the Crumbling Ferrum, but if you want it earlier, you can fight Alexander at any point, kill him and you'll get the weaker version of this. And you do have to fight the gods can do to get there, but you can take the dragon temple lift and basically you make your way to the right here and you'll be jumping on a few like broken down buildings and he'll be in this area. If you want to see exactly how to get there, I do show the exact path in my Sub-Zero video, so I'll link it for you guys. For the incantations, we have a bit to get through. So for lightning spear, honed bolt, ancient dragons, lightning strike, you can bind those from vendors, either from the Pope at the Church of the Vows or the Prophet Guy at Roundtable Hold. The first prayer book will get you these two, and you can find it in Lyurnia of the Lakes. If you use the Artist's Shack at Side of Grace, there will be a knight uh, wandering this area, this road right here, and once you defeat him, you'll be able to have that prayer book. For the second prayer book, it's a bit further in the game, unfortunately, it is in the Crumbling Ferrum. But you want to take the Crumbling Beast Grave Depths Side of Grace. You make your way through this room and then go down the stairs and take a right once you see another set of stairs. And you'll be able to loot it from this body right here. So uh, be careful though, there's a lot of enemies and you should uh, kill them before you try to get it. Now for this glaive, you need to defeat the ancient dragon of the same name. I'm not even going to pretend I know how to pronounce that freaking name. But basically, you first encounter him and there's no way you missed him. <laughs> basically, it's as you go through the Altus Plateau and the abandoned coffin. Uh, as you make your way through here, he'll spawn. And you have to fight him there first and deplete his health like halfway through, I think. And then he'll disappear. And you can finally fight him and defeat him in this area. So take the rampart side path. And once you get to this area right here, he will spawn. And he's pretty easy. He's one of the easiest dragons, in my opinion, to fight. So it shouldn't be too much of a problem. After that, we have a Fortisax Lightning Spear. So again, you need to complete Fia's questline to be able to get this incantation from Fortisax Remembrance. To sum it up, you need to defeat the Twin Gargles 
After you've defeated Radon, you can make your way to the city of Nocron, and you need to find the aqueduct facing cliff area. And once you go through here, you'll eventually find the gargoyles that you need to fight. Once you fight them, you'll find a coffin in that same boss room uh, at the very end of it. Once you take the coffin, you'll be teleported to this other underground area here uh, at the Great Waterfall Crest. Once you do that, you're going to make your way through the disgustingly large freaking bugs and then make your way through here across the route and you'll be able to continue Fia's questline right here for the frozen lightning spear it's again in another freaking underground area but i also made an entire video showing you exactly how and where to get it and also um, how to defeat the boss you'll need to fight so again i'll put that in a card or something like that so you can see it and click on it and lastly the buff will be using the dragon bolt blessing can be found again in the altus plateau you want to take this same side of grace for that dragon you fought rampart side path and you want to make your way right here to the Stormcaller Church. Now, once you get there, uh, if you go into the church the right way, then the chest will be to your right behind the wall, and there will be an enemy there. And that's where the spell will be. Now, I'm going to go through all the incantations with you and the specifics of these lightning incantations and how they work. If you're in water or if it's raining, they'll do more damage. And they'll also arc further, like if um, they hit the ground like this they'll arc further and they'll do more damage. The Dragon Bolt blessing, blessing makes it so that when they hit you, some of the attacks will bounce off. Like you see it bounced off as if, you know, we're really hot of stone, basically. That's not all hits, you know, it's some hits, but it's really, really useful. Bonk, so then you can, you know, bonk them back as it is. Finding Spear is a great incantation overall. It goes pretty far, you can charge it up for more damage. And it's also really good for bosses. And even the base damage does a lot. You could also use Honed Bolt, but it doesn't do a lot of damage on uh, bigger enemies, especially bosses. I found that it doesn't do a lot of damage, but the cool thing is you can recast it, you can continuously do it, and you can also like change target as you do it. But be careful if you're out of range. The range is not super good, it's not as, um, as good as Lightning Sphere. And if you're out of range, then again, you'll spend it for nothing and it won't hit uh, the enemy you're aiming at. Now, most of the other spells like Frozen Lightning Spear, uh, the Glaive, and Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike are really good AoEs. They do a ton of damage. And the Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike is what I used a lot against bosses because, again, it does a ton of damage and you can charge it up. But a good thing about these is that it used to, like, knock you out of the air if the enemies would hit you only once. But now you can like take a few hits and still be able to put it down. And as you see, this travels, you know, pretty far. Like I'll let them hit me, and it doesn't, it doesn't knock me down right away like it used to. And it's the same thing for the Frozen Lightning Spear. Now all of these uh, spells will hit if you like directly hit the enemy if you're right on top of them. Like there is initial damage on the hit, but there's also damage, you know, on the the way the arcs and things like that. I believe the glaive has the biggest arcing lightning, as you see, you know, it it does less damage, but it does cover uh, bigger damage. And with Ancient Dragon's uh, lightning strike, you can hold it, and it does a ton of damage. It covers a lot, like, <laughs> look at all the, uh, the enemies I just killed with this. And the Ash of War is super fun, I felt it was more Raiden-like, I know a lot of people like using the Thunderbolt, I think it's called. But I wanted to do a bit more melee damage, and it does imbue your weapon uh, with lightning. So you do damage as you strike them, obviously, but there's also damage from the lightning itself, as you see here. But the range is really, really close, so you gotta be really close to them for the lightning to hit them. So that's it for this build, you should have everything you need now. And I really hope you enjoy it because it was super fun to make and it's actually really, really more powerful than I even thought it was going to be. So I hope this video was helpful for you guys. If you want more Elden Ring videos, there are plenty more on my channel. So have yourself a wonderful day and I'll see you all very soon.